Hello, Eternal Church, uh, Pastor Don here, and uh, my heart is full. Um, I, I'm feeling a lot of uh, pride for my church family, and uh, I'll tell you why in a minute, but obviously I had to talk to God about that. Is it okay for me to have this feeling for my congregation? And, and, and we worked it out, uh, because what I was really feeling is pride in, in the Holy Spirit and in the gospel of Jesus Christ and how our community has been a community of real faith that God has given us, that he has provided us with. And I see that being worked out in a couple of areas. Uh, and so those two areas specifically that I want to give updates about that I'm really, uh, you know, I feel a lot of gratitude towards uh, for our community is the blood drive that we just recently completed this week and the COVID relief fund, which is ongoing. So first of all, let me just give you a couple of updates. Uh, for the blood drive, we had 28 donors who donated 24 units of blood, which that number was four more units than what we had set as internal goals. And then in the COVID relief fund, uh, we have had to date 73 donors and they have donated uh, almost $54,000. $54,000 that's sitting in a fund, a bank, waiting to be given to our community uh, when those needs arise. And then I started wondering why those two things were kind of meshed in my head. Is they, they just felt similar. And so I started to write down the similarities. So I just want to share with you the ways in which they're similar because I think it, it helps us to, to see them correctly. Uh, so in both cases, we have been asking you to, to think about the thing that, that's something you have in your life that you just have excess of. You, you, you shouldn't feel guilty about it. You just have more than what you need. And, 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 in, and in both cases, the blood that we have and, and some of the money that we have that we don't need, especially those of us who have received money back from the government that we didn't really need, uh, we were able to see that. And then we said that it's not really a resource issue in a community. That's not why there's people who don't have. It's usually because there is a distribution issue. And so, uh, you know, in other words, if you're sitting at home on Tuesday, you can't just get blood to somebody who's who, who needs a transfusion in Uptown Charlotte at CNC, right? Like you, you, you can't just do that. In the same way with our resources, when somebody really needs it, needs help with a mortgage payment or medicine or food, we can't just get it. We wouldn't even know of those needs to be able to get it to them at that moment. And so through One Blood, the Big Red Bus, and Eternal Church, we have been able to provide for our community a place, a means through which donors can bring the excess of the community, that the river flows through the community, and through those trusted organizations that those resources can flow into those that have the greatest needs. Now there's one other similarity between these two um, um, kind of cases, cases or case studies. And the other similarity is that um, you probably aren't going to know where those resources go specifically. In other words, when you give blood, um, you're not going to know the name of the person who received it. There's a process with giving blood. You donate it and that blood is processed and then it's tested and then it's stored. And then it's finally distributed to medical facilities. And then it's finally transfused into somebody who has a name. That life-saving blood goes to somebody. And you trust that process. Um, and that person might get those resources two, four, five days after you've given blood. Or sometimes up to 30 or 40 days after you've given blood. It's going to be the same, I think, with the COVID relief fund. Um, we want those resources to go mainly for our community. And, the, the, and we're withholding those funds now because we believe in what we've seen in our community is that we had a pretty sturdy community and there are just now because of month, two month now of this uh, pandemic, we're just now starting to see cracks, fissures in our community where people are just now beginning to get anxious about their jobs or mortgage payments or groceries or food and other issues. And so um, my heart is full, however, because we're prepared we're ready now to give those resources to the, to, to the ones in our community who have the most need. But you probably aren't going to know who, you're probably not going to know when and where, uh, because we also want to uh, kind of keep confidentiality for those who, who really need it. And now I just wanna shift at the end here to talk specifically to maybe you who is listening to this, whoever's out in our community, 
who, who, who maybe you feel really anxious uh, right now about your job or or about a next bill that's coming and you don't have the resources, I want you to know, I can't make it clear enough to you that our, our, our benevolent fund, this COVID relief fund is for you. The reason why we did this is for you to take advantage of it. Uh, I know for my family who gave into this fund and probably for anybody else who gave into this fund, we did so joyfully awaiting the moment when we could give those resources to you, somebody who is in need. And so if you have need, we have a dedicated uh, small group of deacons who are overseeing that fund. Um, they will process your needs, whatever they are. Don't feel guilty, don't feel embarrassed. Come to us, call us. We're awaiting, in joy, waiting to, to, to release these funds into your life. And so, uh, let us know when you're in need, and we will handle your needs confidential, confidentially as well. And so uh, that's the update. Uh, thank you for listening to me this six minutes or so. Um, I'm excited for our church. Love you very much. I miss you incredibly. It's killing me not being with you. I'm an introvert uh, until right now. And now I really miss you. So... <laughs> uh, uh, I, I love you and miss you, and uh, I can't wait to worship with you this weekend.